Hello, I'm Dr. Krayotrao, and I'm here to tell you why playing video games is not a waste of time or a banal pastime, but you can actually learn a lot from them. Today, we will embark in a wholesome adventure full of exploration and playfulness, visiting the world of new Pokemon Snap. But before we continue, I would like to ask you a small favor. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing or sharing it with your friends. It's just a small click for you, but it really means a lot to me. So yeah, let's start. New Pokemon Snap is the sequel of the Nintendo 64 game Pokemon Snap. It is a first-person photography game developed by Bandai Namco Studios and published by Nintendo. The game was released in 2021 for the Nintendo Switch console. I will start reviewing the story of the game and doing a brief analysis of the narrative. Even though I always try to be as general as possible and not telling anything about the ending of the game, this part might contain spoilers. So if you want to avoid spoilers, just jump to this place in the video. And let's go! In this story, you are playing as yourself and you can even choose the gender you want to play as. You start by traveling to the islands in the Lental region and meeting with Professor Mirror and his apprentice, Rita. Professor Mirror is in charge of the Lens Lab, Laboratory of Ecological and Natural Sciences, and he asks you to help him with his research. To help him, you need to capture information about different Pokemon species that inhabit the region. You capture information by photographing the different species of Pokemon you see, as well as different behaviors and activities they carry out. You take your pictures from a safe place, a hovercraft called the Neo One, and which follows predefined paths in each of the sites you visit. The Neo One protects you from environmental hazards, such as extra cold environment and underwater pressure, allowing you to focus on taking the best pictures you can get. You start in the region of Florio Nature Park, where you learn the basics of how to take pictures and how certain Pokemon behaviors can be influenced. Here you are also introduced to an important part of the story, which is helping Professor Mirror to solve the mystery of the fluorescent Pokemon, called the Lumina Pokemon, that appear in the region. You are also introduced here to the possibility of revisiting the levels during night to get a picture of a rare Lumina flower, which becomes important later on in the mechanics of the game. Then you move to Belusilva, where you find both the Fungia jungle, which is a jungle-like environment, and the Elsewhere forest, which is full of mist, which makes it a mystic place. The Elsewhere forest contains areas where the seasons change, and where seasonal Pokémon appear and can be photographed in their different forms. Then you unlock the Maricopia and Voluca zones, in Maricopia, you find the beach, the reef, and the seafloor zones, which, as you might guess, allow you to find all different types of aquatic Pokémon. In Voluca, you find the desert and the volcano, where you can find ground and fire Pokémon. Finally, you move to the Durice region. You find the snow fields where you can photograph lots of ice-type Pokémon, and the cave, where you can photograph lots of rare and mythical Pokémon. The main story goal is to get a hold of the pictures of all the Illumina flowers, so Professor Mirror can develop a way to activate other flowers and transmit the Illumina effect to other Pokémon. Then you can find the Illumina Pokémon around the region and snap a picture of them. Having done that, we'll unlock a last island, where you can find a very rare mythical Pokémon whose pictures will help Professor Mirror develop his theory on the history of the Lental region. The game doesn't end here, of course, but it marks the end of the game's story's arc. The narrative of the game is pretty simple. It is a variation of the hero quest where you are a hero on a mission to gather data of different Pokémon by taking pictures. Then you are given a more challenging task, to find and photograph a very specific type of Pokémon, which can help a scientist to understand the story of the region you are in. It is kind of the same as the hero quest, but instead of a story of tribulations that will build you up for a final challenge, you only get the fun of it. In your adventure, you are always chilling and having a nice time, visiting wonderful landscapes and taking pictures of super cute Pokémon in their natural habitat. 
you are just guided towards the epic end of your journey. And unlike Odysseus, here you can just sit and enjoy your ride. If you are familiar with my videos, you know that my main goal is to look into the county skills the game taps when we play it. However, Pokemon Snap is a little bit of a different game because it's not goal-oriented, so we will be looking at other cognitive skills and other abilities the game foster. New Pokemon Snap is a wholesome game that you can play at your own pace, with different goals in mind, like capturing your favorite Pokemon, or getting a very beautiful picture that gets many likes on the internet, or capturing very neatly a very specific Pokemon behavior. Having said this, these are the cognitive skills and psychological faculties I see the game tapping into. First, we have this special reasoning. It is the skill we use the most in this game. As we know from previous videos, this is the reasoning about our visual world, which includes how we create mental images of it, how we use images to create mental models, how we code certain information about our environment, and how we visually locate ourselves in the world. Needless to say, in a photography game such as New Pokemon Snap, this spatial reasoning is the main focus. You need spatial awareness to know where you are, to correctly locate the Pokemon within your frame, and to follow the rules the game presents to you so you can take pictures worth many points. In addition, this spatial reasoning in the game also taps into aesthetics, as it is not just about snapping pictures like shooting a gun but about doing it at the correct time, in the correct angle, and in the right location. Fine motor skills are also tapped by the game. Remember that fine motor skills are our ability to do accurate and sharp movements, sometimes in quick succession, such as pressing certain keys on the keyboard at a specific moment, or moving the joystick of your controller in a specific direction. In New Pokémon Snap we use these skills when we are aiming to take a picture, or when we are focusing on a Pokémon to position it the best you can before taking the picture. Sometimes you need it to move around quickly and precisely in order to snap a very quick reaction of a Pokémon, which will appear only a fraction of a second for you to capture it. Exploration is also a skill or behavior tapped by the game. Exploration taps into our curiosity and it is our ability to have an open mind and see problems from different angles, explore different paths, try different solutions, or combine different information in order to get new information and knowledge. In our everyday life, we use exploration every time we visit a new city, practice a new sport, cook a recipe, or are confronted with a new problem whose solutions we don't know. In New Pokémon Snap, we use exploration every time we go into a level and learn which Pokémon appear and where, or which are their behaviors. We can also conduct experiments with them, such as giving them food, play music, or throw luminous spheres to them to see if this triggers a new behavior. Eventually, this exploration expands when you get more information and can tie some behaviors together so that you can trigger chain events and Pokémon interactions. And now we are moving towards something even more important, some psychological faculties we have not seen in previous videos. These are not skills as such, but psychological capacities we have and which drive us. When we think about games, we usually think in terms of beating a boss, saving the world, winning, or getting to the goal. However, this is not the case for new Pokémon Snap. Although it has an end game and some challenges, the game extends beyond that, and you can create your own goals. The fact that you are making your own goals and playing the game at your own pace, enjoying an aesthetic experience, makes the game wholesome. This means the game is an experience that is healthy, cozy, innocent, and in general terms, nice. Interestingly, these feelings of wholesomeness have not been very much studied in the psychology of games, so it took me quite some time to find some theories and researchers that account for similar experiences. The first one is the Tent and Befriend theory, developed by Bree Code. She proposes that games are not only competitive tools, which bring us happiness by means of building stress and releasing adrenaline, using fight or flight responses. Adrenaline in games takes advantage of our biology. When we are threatened, we generate adrenaline, we fight, we win, and it boosts our sense of mastery and self-esteem. 
Instead, she proposes another type of biological building for games, one where the game helps us produce oxytocin instead of adrenaline, and which, instead of a fight-or-flight response, generates a feeling of care and connect. These are not based on winning and achieving, but on reaching a balance where we all have benefits. These games give the player a sense of comfort and peace. Games like these are, for example, Animal Crossing, where you build relationships and care for others. You do not win in the game, and even after you have finished your main goal, you can continue playing, fulfilling your own goals, tending to your city, and keeping relationships with your fellows. This gives a sense of zen, peace, and coziness. New Pokémon Snap is a tend and befriend game, where you do not get a feeling of well-being from empowerment and beating up the bad guys, but you get it from the beauty of the atmosphere, the pace of the game, and the overarching feeling of exploration and connection you have with the Pokémon world. There is also little psychological research about fun for the sake of it. For some reason, fun is studied within psychology as a means to a goal, for example, to well-being, but not as a goal in itself. Raf Koster, a game designer, developed a theory of fun, trying to understand what fun is, why do we have fun, and how to achieve fun experiences using games. Even though part of his theory is developed around goal-oriented experiences, he acknowledges that we are all different. Thus, fun comes in different ways for each of us, and fun can be achieved by wholesome experiences instead of the classic win, conquer, or fulfill an objective. Fun for the sake of it is part of the new Pokémon Snap. Of course, you have a whole system of challenges and points that will help you keep track of the things you have to do, and keep you interested if you are the type of player who gets fun from solving challenges. However, the joy you get from the game is not tied to an end, but is just fun. This is also tied to the playfulness of the game. Playfulness is a faculty that both humans and animals share, especially in younger stages of development. Playfulness can be described as the opposite of gaming, as defined by Huizinga in his book Homo Ludens. While games such as chess have a goal, for example, to beat your opponent, play has no aim, but fun in itself. For example, when you see children play, they might make new rules all the time, or change the characteristics of objects, or invent a story which is parallel to their play, this helps enrich their play experience, where the final goal is just to have fun and not necessarily to win or overcome an obstacle. New Pokémon Snap can act like this, as you can navigate the game making your own goals. For example, see what happens if you throw a Lumina Ball to a Pokémon, or try luring two Pokémon together to see what happens, or just to capture the picture of a Pokémon jumping out of the water with the sunset at their backs. Aesthetic experiences are another way we can relate with our environment, and that can prove beneficial for our mental and physical health. In fact, research conducted in different settings on aesthetics and well-being assert the relationship of aesthetic experiences, like those lived in a museum, with stress reduction, memory improvement, and social inclusion. Studies carried with different populations, like ill people or people suffering from a mental illness, show an improvement in their mood and general mental health, and this is true for different aesthetic experiences such as graphic arts and music. New Pokémon Snap can be played as an aesthetic experience, where your goal is to take pictures of these curious creatures in interesting and beautiful environments. Take for example here, the beach in the sunset with the different Lapras Pokémon evoke a feeling of nostalgia and calm. Different scenarios have different aesthetics and generate different feelings, but even those that are not so pleasant, like the oppressive seabed scenario, give the player something rewarding, such as the mesmerizing feeling of seeing this colossal and beautiful Pokémon swim by your side. And now I'm going to talk about design. However, for new Pokémon Snap, I really want to emphasize the graphic design. First, because the design of the Pokémon is just so beautiful, it really captures their cuteness and curious nature. And second, because the design of the landscapes is just so beautiful and immersive that you cannot just get your hands out of the game 
or your eyes out of it. The game is divided in islands and regions. There are a total of five islands, the park, the forest, the volcano, the archipelago, and the Arctic. Each of the islands is divided into regions that you can explore. For example, the archipelago has three regions, the beach, the sea, and the deep sea, while the volcanic island has the desert and the volcano. Some areas can be played during the day and during the night, with different Pokémon coming out in each condition, or having different behaviors you can photograph. Other areas change every visit, like the Elsewhere Forest, which changes seasons every time you visit it. At the end of each course, Professor Mirror will ask you to choose the picture you like the best and grade them based on certain conditions. For example, you get more points if there are many Pokémon in the picture, if the Pokémon is big, if it is center in the frame, or if you get a nice background with your Pokémon. Each Pokémon has four behaviors you can photograph, and you get points also depending on which of these behaviors you capture. So you always aim to get the highest possible ranking for each of the four specific pictures. The game also showcases a challenge section, where you find information about weird Pokémon behaviors, and you can unlock cool features and filters if you manage to capture those behaviors. In addition, the game has a super cool feature allowing you to edit your pictures, use filters and stickers on them, and share them online with your friends or planes around the world, or just save them for yourself in your Nintendo Switch. You can also see other people's pictures and vote on how much you like them. Regarding character design, well, the main character is you, a Pokémon lover that goes to the Lental region to help the research of Professor Mirror. You seem to be a talented, although inexperienced photographer. The professor takes your help and gives you a special camera that acts as a Pokédex, allowing you to identify and register different Pokémon. Professor Mirror is basically the stereotypical absent-minded scientist who is just to focus on his research. He's very good at what he does, but sometimes he forgets to use his common sense. Rita is some sort of an intern. She went to the park for a vacation, but decided to help Professor Mirror with his research. She is just helping around in the lab and tutoring you on how to take pictures and use the different gadgets the professor develops to help you capture more data. Phil is a pupil of Todd. They came together to the island so that he could get better at taking pictures. However, he is not allowed so much into the action as you are. Todd is actually the main character of the original Pokémon Snap released for Nintendo 64. He is here to help you with some tips. Upgrade a bit your camera with features that can prompt other behaviors on Pokémon and in general just serve as a cameo of the first game. The graphic design of the game is just beautiful. It conveys the cuteness of the Pokémon with a pleasant aesthetic blending of the scenery. For me, it is difficult to describe the graphic design of the game. Personally, I found it more to be an aesthetic experience where I submerge into a world full of beauty and with the sole task of taking the best pictures of the most cute and intriguing creatures of the world. The environments are extremely immersive. You feel relaxed on the beach at sunset and oppressed and anxious when you are in the deep sea. However, you know nothing bad will happen to you. Pokémon will not attack you and you are totally safe inside the Neo One. So you don't stress about anything. Just sit, relax, and take the best photos you can, and if you do not get one, you can always try again. The sound and music of the game are good. The music is soothing, but it matches the different environments you are in when taking pictures. It is not pervasive and loud, but something in the background which helps you not to feel lonely while enjoying the landscape. As for the sounds, they are fantastic, especially when it comes to the sounds of Pokémon. Sometimes you get sound cues of where a Pokémon is, or environmental cues that something is happening or going to happen. And of course, you have all the environmental sounds that help you get immersed in this fantastic universe. As you already know, many games contain different layers, or different perspectives, or different ways to read them. Sometimes that is given in the shape of a metaphor, sometimes it's there put by the designers, and sometimes it's just something that resonates with us. Although I don't think New Pokémon Snap has a different layer or metaphoric meaning behind what it shows, 
there is something that resonates with me. For the case of new Pokemon Snap, I really like how they present us with an animal-friendly version of the Pokemon world. We are used to the regular games, where you capture Pokemon and make them fight. Although this is only a mechanic from a fictional world, we can say that the ethics behind these are a bit doubtful. However, new Pokemon Snap presents us with a different way to explore the Pokemon world. Instead of catching them, you go and visit them in their natural environment. You don't even have to catch them to research them, but the camera does this work for you. So even if you are being a bit invasive with the Pokemon in their environment, you are not taking them away from there, and you are doing research on them in a totally harmless way, while still enjoying their company and the sights of them. As we have seen, New Pokemon Snap is a wholesome game that is appropriate for all ages and people. However, there are two main problems I see with the games, especially when using them in formal settings. The first one is that it is a Nintendo Switch exclusive and the second one is the way the pictures are graded inside the game. The problem with the game being a Nintendo exclusive is that it makes the game extremely hard to use at schools. First, because you have to own the Switch console, which is already around 300 euros. And then you have to buy the game, which is about 50 euros. It will be very difficult for a whole classroom to get these two things. So probably only small classes or schools of children with affluent parents could use the game. Nevertheless, the use at home is pretty straightforward. If your children already own the console and the game, they just need to play it. Parents can also enjoy watching the game and having a cozy and relaxing time with their children taking pictures of Pokemon. The second problem I see with the game is the way of grading the pictures. The grading in the game doesn't follow the principles of photography and art composition. So your children or students won't be learning these principles by playing the game, but kind of the opposite. For example, pictures with big Pokemon in the middle of the frame get more points than pictures with small Pokemon at the side. However, the principle of thirds says that good composition of a picture is achieved when the main subject of the picture is located at a third of the frame. That's why on my videos I always try to position myself with my head at this point and my body at this point, so I can follow this aesthetic principle. So in general, new Pokemon Snap gives you more points if you violate the photography and composition principles and just take pictures with a horrible composition. Now we arrive to the good old questions. What do we learn from the game? How can we use these games in school or at home? The game is really easy to use in order to foster cognitive skills. The main mechanics of the game naturally foster fine motor skills and this spatial reasoning as mechanics such as taking a picture, zooming, moving, framing a Pokemon or an object inside a picture, all of that makes that organically you are fostering and tapping into these skills all the time while you're playing the game. Exploration depends more on each person. For example, while some people will just go randomly throwing fluff fraud to Pokemons around the world, Others will systematically go to the levels like again and again in order to see how small changes here uh, affect the overall Pokemon behavior. If you want to foster other types of exploratory behavior, you can do it using guiding questions. For example, uh, do you know what happens when you play music to this Pokemon? Or do you think you can get a better picture of this Pokemon? Children will also play the game in different ways. For example, more competitive children might try to master the punctuation system of the pictures so they can have the highest scores, while others will just go for the wholesomeness and tend and befriend feeling of the game. Personally, I do not find any playing style better than the other. I really think you should try to encourage the playing style the child is using so they just have fun and naturally foster their cognitive skills. Uh, trying to force a playing style to a person is really not a good idea. And even if they play outside the box, they are still learning something. You can also use a game to generate aesthetic experiences and help people to relax or maybe overcome stressful situations. 
Um, other activities you might like to pair the playing of the game with might be drawing or going out with your children on a cell phone and taking pictures of animals. Something else that occurs to me, especially when using the game in the classroom, is to teach the actual principles of picture composition and start taking pictures inside the game disregarding the punctuation system and in the end gather the best pictures taken by the children and making an art exhibition in the school. That will actually be lots of fun. Take the game, play it, give it to your children and immerse in this wonderful world of wholesomeness where your only goal is to relax and capture the beauty that surrounds you. If you find my videos interesting, please leave a like or a comment and consider subscribing to my channel for more content.